Hey everybody, this is Ebody and X from the Candid Frame. I was looking at the images that I produced last month, or actually didn't produce last month, and I was really disappointed. I've been pretty good so far this year producing a lot of new photographs, but there was something about the previous month that really put a damper in my picture taking. And I realized that that's pretty much par for the course for a lot of us who enjoy street photography. Because there's work, there's family life, there are all these commitments you know, that we're obligated to take care of. So it's hard sometimes to go out and find time to produce this kind of photography. But I thought about it and I thought, you know, it's summertime. And one of the things that usually happens a lot during the summertime is that there are gatherings of family and friends. There are barbecues, there are trips to the beach, um, there are visits to the park, to the zoo. And that might be a good time to actually practice the skill set that is involved in street photography. Because even though these people are our family and friends, you can still approach it as you would photographing in the street. Because you're still creating a composition in which you include people within the context of the scene and the frame. And so I wanted to choose some images that really kind of explore that idea. Because if you're struggling like me with finding time to go out and practice photography, if you have a family or event or you're going to attend a party this summer, you might want to take your camera and not just make snapshots, but try and make the kind of interesting compositions that you would if you were if you were out in the street making street photographs. Here we have a shot by Sean Bowden. This was created with a Fuji X Pro 2 at 1 250th of a second. F8, ISO 2000. So here we have this really nice photograph of these young women here with this baby. And then we have this, well, actually two kids on a swing on the far left. And you have this woman with this really cool dress, which looks like it's just a, a pattern of apples. It's a really cool scene. I really like the moment here. And I like that there's two different things that are happening in this scene. You have that encounter between the two women with the one admiring the, the baby. And then we have these two kids at play with one kid, you know, in the upswing, literally. And then this other kid who sort of settled down. And you have the contrast of these two groups of people within the composition. Then you have all this gesture that's happening here. Obviously, the, 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 the gesture that you have here are of this woman reaching out, touching the fat legs of the baby, the baby's arms, uh, the flow of this woman's arm here leading to the center of the frame, both of their expressions. And then we have the gesture of the kid here lifting up into the air into the swing and looking off to the, the left of the frame. And then you have this kid, kid here who's fairly static. So you get... Wonderful gesture. The light is really soft and diffused, so you know get, you get very even lighting. We're not, we're not dealing with very dramatic lighting, but by converting the image over to black and white, this image becomes something really interesting tonally because you have sort of those really bright whites, especially the, the skin tone here. It starts moving into a little bit of like middle gray here on the, on the skin tones, and then you have those nice dark blacks of this woman's dress. And in this, you know, this area here where a bunch of stuff is being stored, including this, this carriage and what looks to be a couple of bicycles. And then you have this expansive scene in the back that shows you that this isn't the middle of the, of the city. This is in some rural area. This is a kind of layered composition that I'm always trying to pursue out in the street, which is incredibly difficult. But because there's a familiarity with the people there... And because you can sort of expect that they are going to be there for a little while interacting, it really provides you the freedom to be able to sort of jockey your position, to carefully consider not just capturing the main action of either, you know, the baby being admired or the kids on the swing, but thinking about, okay, how can I create a composition where those two things play off of each other? And because the people know you, they know that the camera is there. You have a lot of freedom in terms of moving around and taking a lot of pictures. You don't have to worry about 
suddenly being discovered and people looking at you and wondering, what the hell are you doing? Why are you taking pictures of our kids? And so on and so forth. It's the perfect opportunity to be that fly on the wall, that documentary photographer who is observing every nuance of human interaction within the scene and producing really interesting photographs. So, Sean, this is a wonderful, wonderful shot. Next, we have a shot by Pericles Leucopolis. Hope I said that right. This was shot with a Leica M10 at 250th of a second, F11, ISO 1250. So you have these kids at play, and this is a common scene, especially when you go to a gathering with family and friends where there are a lot of kids. And once they get to playing, even if you have your camera with you, at some point, they may mug for the camera at first, but eventually they'll just ignore you, and they'll just go about playing because kids have a very, very short attention span. And that mugging for the camera doesn't last forever. After a while, they'll just go on interacting with each other, and that is the perfect opportunity for you to continue, continue shooting. And this scene is very much like the other shot. It is a really interesting layered composition with, with you know, several kids in different planes of the scene. We have this first girl with the dark hair who's in the center of the frame. And I love the sort of awkward gesture of her left hand extended back, going down the middle of her back, and then her right hand, you know, creating this lovely sort of S-curve, which leads us to these two kids here who are play fighting here on the right, who are another another plane of the scene. And then to the left of that girl, we have these three. We have this girl here who has an arm that's kind of mirrors the gesture that we see of this girl here, though it's a little, a little less dramatic. And then you have these two kids here laughing hysterically with this other kid leaning on him, his cheek pressed against this kid's left arm, this kid raising his hand up to his face. This is remarkable in terms of gesture all across the board. The lighting here, this is not especially dramatic. Uh, like the previous shot, we're dealing with open shade. We can see that there is some sunlight down here, hitting the building and the facade here. But most of the action here is happening in the, in, in the shade. But despite the fact we don't have really dramatic light, the gesture, the, um, the expressions, the body language, the tones and textures and lines that pervade this entire frame, this is wonderful stuff. I don't know if these are kids that Pericles here knew or whether they were neighborhood kids that he's familiar with, but that's not really important because what I'm suggesting is something that can happen you know, with the kids that are in your, in your life, in your circle of friends. Because when kids start doing this kind of stuff, you can make wonderful shots like this if you're patient, if you have... You know, if you're paying attention to a degree where you're seeing them not just as kids, but as graphic elements within the scene. What's especially important here is the scene. It's the ground, the brickwork on the left-hand side. I mean, it is a marvelous setting for this, for this shot. But whether it's, you know, a street in Europe, whether it's your backyard, whether it's the beach... You can find interesting settings in which wonderful things are happening. And one of the things to not lose sight of is when you are photographing kids or adults interacting, don't just focus completely on the people, on the action. Consider what's happening with the background. Consider what's happening with the setting. Because if you are aware of it, you may find that you need to position yourself in a way to leverage that scene, because the spot where you initially discovered the, the people and the action playing out may not necessarily be the best spot from which to make the photograph. And that can be the starting point, but too many people make the mistake of beginning to shoot from one spot and never moving. And for me, I've learned that that initial spot usually is not the best spot. I have to reconsider, evaluate not only my subjects, but my background, and try to figure out from what perspective I'm going to need to move in order to make the best shot. So when you go out and you shoot, 
make sure that you consider that to make sure you're making the best frame possible. Next, we have a shot by Giselle Dupriz. Uh, this was created with the Fujifilm X100F, shot at one nine hundredth of a second at f10, ISO 400. Now, the beach is a big part of summer, whether you're on the West Coast, on the East Coast, and some other part of the world, and you're a lake, or, you know, going to the water, especially when it's hot, is one of the things that so many of us do to cool off and to spend time with our family and friends. And because people are doing things, especially wading into the water and swimming and splashing around, it is ripe for photography, though, of course, you want to be careful that you don't get your camera wet. But besides that, you can observe people doing some really interesting things, especially kids. And I really love how these two kids are tentatively uh, about to walk into the water. I, I love their outfits, you know, the Hello Kitty outfit of the girl on the left and these pink uh, head headgear that they're, uh, that they're both wearing. And uh, the use of flash here is really nice. It helps contend with the uh, high contrast overhead light that's, uh, that was illuminating the scene here. But I really love, like with all the other shots, is the gesture and the the expression. The, the girl on the far right and the way she's sort of bending her knees and extending her arms, you can tell she's a little nervous about going out into the water. And the other one is looking directly at the camera, which doesn't bother me at all. I like the contrast that that, that, that creates. And I absolutely love, love, love the hand of the adult extended from the left-hand side of the frame, who's obviously related to these two and is sort of gently coaxing them into the into the water. But even if Giselle didn't know who these girls were and they were just strangers who she just managed to make a photograph, the whole idea that I'm talking about uh, for you this summer, it's exactly the same thing. Getting in close, watching gesture, body language, expression, and creating shots that really kind of reveal people being people and enjoying themselves within the context of the scene. This is a moment that could be happening in someone's backyard or in, you know, in a public pool in the Midwest or wherever, wherever you live. Stuff like this is happening all the time. But if it's people that you know, people that are familiar with you, people who are accustomed to you and your camera, you can get so much closer and if you're carefully observing how things are playing out, you can make some remarkable photographs. And yes, they may not qualify as quote-unquote street photography. But the thing is, everything that you're practicing when you're making these pictures is going to apply when you're out in the street photographing perfect strangers. The same skill set is going to apply. You're going to be considering a light and shadow. You're going to be considering the, the scene and the lines and the shapes that it reveals. You're looking at people in terms of their expression, their body language, their gesture. You're thinking about not just making a two-dimensional shot, but making a shot with layers that's much more com complex and much more interesting. Photographing when the environment and the people around you are so familiar and comfortable provides you so much freedom and it reduces the amount of pressure that many of us feel when it comes to photographing in the street and photographing perfect strangers. This is great practice. And as you gain confidence photographing in this way, I guarantee you that the next time you go out and you shoot, you'll be remembering all the things that you did right when you were photographing your own family and your own friends in those very private moments. All right. I hope that's helpful to you guys and that, you know, it helps inspire you this summer. It's almost almost over. And if you haven't had the opportunity to go out and make a lot of photographs, maybe this gives you the perfect excuse to, you know, pull out your camera and make some make some photographs. I know I need to make a lot more photographs in August because otherwise I'm going to be very, very disappointed. But uh, another source of inspiration, I think, is The Candid Frame which is my podcast in which I feature conversations with photographers about their work and their careers. And uh, you can check it out by visiting thecandidframe.com. And I have over 431 interviews so far. The most recent one was with a photographer, Melissa Spitz, a documentary photographer who is now based in New York. And she documented her mother's struggle with mental illness. It's a very difficult subject matter, but a very important one. And I really admire uh, Melissa and her mother 
for opening their lives up in this way and creating a body of work that is really nothing short of amazing. So if you've never heard an episode of The Candid Frame, this is a great place to start. And uh, I encourage you to check it out. And if you like what you hear there, please, please subscribe. And if you like what you're seeing here uh, on the on the uh, YouTube channel and you want to submit images to, uh, to the Flickr group, well, all you need to do is go to Flickr, do a search on The Candid Frame, and just ask to be added. But you have to do it on your computer rather than on your tablet or phone. If, if you try it on your tablet or phone, you'll get a message telling you that it's a private group and you can't join. So the only solution for that is to try and uh, do it on your computer and uh, usually get to it once a week. And if you like what you're seeing in these videos, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.